The core of the early Cold War conflicts were armaments, nuclear capabilities. It made for a paranoid atmosphere throughout the 1950s, and in 1956, the U.S. began running reconnaissance missions over Russia. With the high-altitude U-2 spy plane, Eisenhower wanted to keep an eye on the Soviets' military facilities. These missions flew uninterrupted for four years. U-2 aircraft flew too high for Soviet jets and missiles, but that would change by the spring of 1960. Months before Nikita Khrushchev arrived in New York for the 1960 session of the UN General Assembly, the Soviets shot down an American U-2 spy plane as it flew over Russian airspace and captured its pilot, Francis Gary Powers. The spy plane incident on the eve of the summit was seized upon by the Kremlin and blown up to proportions that startled and shocked the outside world. Khrushchev himself at the Moscow press conference loosed a furious tirade, charging America with deliberate aggression and threatening to attack any allied bases from which U-2 jets flew over Russia. The timing couldn't have been worse. Khrushchev was scheduled to join President Eisenhower, as well as leaders from France and Great Britain, for a summit in Paris, less than two weeks after the spy plane was shot down. And when Eisenhower refused to apologize, Khrushchev pulled out of the summit. Relations between the U.S. and Russia were in freefall. And then came the 1960s session of the UN General Assembly, which began in September. Khrushchev wasn't invited, but he showed up anyway, declaring himself the head of the Soviet Union's UN delegation. The 1960s session of the United Nations General Assembly convenes one of the most momentous diplomatic gatherings in modern history. With the crisis-ridden Congo, one of 13 African nations admitted, along with Cyprus, to bring UN membership to a new high of 96. Nearly all are represented by high officials. Nikita Khrushchev leads a parade of Soviet and satellite chieftains unprecedented on American shores. Khrushchev's disdain for the U.S. was on full display from the start. When President Eisenhower took the podium, he was greeted with a warm applause, but as a camera methodically scanned the audience for Khrushchev's reaction, it found the Russian premier stoic. If the USSR will agree to a cessation of production of fissionable materials for weapon purposes, some production facilities could be closed without delay. Khrushchev would hold his stoicism throughout Eisenhower's speech, but by September 29th, he could do so no longer. Khrushchev continued his boisterous boorish tactics. Britain's Prime Minister Macmillan was but one of his targets. Khrushchev created several interruptions, shouting and pounding on his desk beyond the recent spy plane incident. Khrushchev was angry about the UN's handling of escalating trouble in the Congo. There would be other outbursts in the weeks to follow, including one where Khrushchev allegedly took off his shoe and banged it against his desk. These theatrics pointed to a deepening divide between the East and West, something that would play out in a series of dramatic events in 1961 and 62. Pushing the world closer to all-out nuclear war than it's ever been before. When Nikita Khrushchev arrived for the 1960 session of the UN General Assembly, it marked his second visit to the United States. When he left, he never returned. <laughs> 